Hello and welcome back to Switch and Lever. Today we're making an adjustable miniature square. The plans for this project can be downloaded at the link in the description. Start scouring for material and cutting everything down to size. Watch out for the hot chips flying. In hindsight, I probably should have used another end mill. Look at that, the measurements are correct. And there's a gnarly burr on the piece, or <laughs> as we call it in Sweden, it has a beard. Start off the hole either with a stub drill, or as in this case a center drill, and follow through with a re regular drill bit. You can zero out your DRO in an empty hole fairly easily by putting a piece of paper to overlap. And make sure to drill slightly undersized to your final uh, dimension. Also, be quite liberal with the cutting fluid, you really don't want to have a broken off bit in, in your hole. Since you drilled undersize, you can now chase down the sides and square off the bottom of the hole using a square ended end mill. Off camera, I also plunge milled a small slot next to the main hole for the key to fit in a later stage. To zero out the slotting saw, you can use a sacrificial piece of metal of similar size Hang it out of the vise and come in from under the piece and listen, listen for the ringing noise as you're touching. Uh, from there you can easily zero out your saw and cut your piece in the right position. These saws aren't really meant to take, uh, take away huge amount of material at once, so take it easy when you're cutting a slot. Better to cut one time more than to ruin either your, your piece or your saw. Make sure you debird the hole as well using a reamer. Now we turn down the shaft for the keyed cylinder. If you, like me, cut it off at the wrong size, then mill down the ends to the, the proper size. Mill down about half the, the surface diameter, then mill away another millimeter extra to create the key. Since the piece is a bit tricky to set up square in the vise, I built up a parallel surface on which I could, uh, could hold another parallel against the piece I was working on. And as you can see it worked pretty well since the tolerance wasn't exactly down to, to a fraction of a degree. After that, uh, just mill the keyway, which will prevent the cylinder from spinning in the hole later. Also, don't forget to cut threads on the end of the cylinder.
The key is just a small piece of steel, ground down to the right dimensions to fit into the keyway quite precisely. Then solder the key into the keyway. Use a little bit of flux to make sure the solder bites and heat up the piece with a small torch. Some discoloration could be expected partly because of the flux. Of course, if it bothers you, you can quite easily polish it off afterwards. I didn't show how to make the adjustable ruler part of the square, but there is really nothing different than making the first body in the beginning of this video, just using other dimensions of course. Milling the slot for the key in the cylinder is a little bit more tricky though. Since you're using such a thin end mill, you will want to go fairly slow and do a lot of passes instead of one deep pass. It's better to take your time than to ruin an end mill or even to ruin your work. To make the nut, first turn down some brass and drill a center hole through it. Then set it up in your mill and mill out the gripping grooves. Alternately, you could also make a knurled nut as well if you have access to the knurling tools. Back in the lathe, remember to cut the threads before you cut it off, as it makes squaring up the tap uh, a lot easier. Polish up all the pieces to your desired finish, and make sure that all the burrs are gone. Enjoy your new adjustable square! Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more videos from Switch and Lever.